enough of you, are there? Tabor before? There are a few places I haven't. Back to the stables, girl. Where now, Joshua? There is a residence just inside the city gates. She awaits us within. My Lord Marquis, it is an honor. I am Yote, Knight of the Undying, charged with the protection of His Grace Joshua Rosfield, Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix. Uh, of course. It all makes sense now. Would you care to elaborate? The Undying are loyal servants to the Ducal Throne or more specifically, to its heir. They have served our family for generations, albeit from the shadows. Since their inception, they have been tasked with the preservation and enactment of the rites of ancestral communion. After the events at Phoenix Gate, it was the Undying who delivered me to safety. And since the day I left Rosaria, Yote has been my constant companion and protector. Without her sword, I would not have survived my journey across the realm. Rise, Lady Yote. You saved my brother. I owe you a debt I can never repay. I but did my duty. Come now, tell us what you've discovered. Your Grace. It is as you feared. The vessel we spied off the coast of the Crystalline Dominion on the night of her fall. It was the Einherjar. Beyond any doubt. The Black Galleon. Joshua. The Einherjar is the Royalist flagship. What business would they have in the Dominion? Uh, upon learning of Walud's involvement in recent events at Drake's Fang, I sensed the malign influence of Ultima, and bid Yote and the Undying look into the matter. We have reason to believe that the Black Galleon weighed anchor shortly after the fighting began, and set a course due south. For Canva? Then it is Waluda Knights who besiege the cities. What is left of them? Yes. And the Black Galleon sails up at one man's behest. Barnabas Tharm. But are we truly safe here in the Agora? The city guard have been paid, if that's what you're implying. All the more reason for them to run. Well, you are free to leave. Lord Minister. Markets abandoned, warehouses aflame, blackened hulls choking every port in the capital. Canva is ruined. The realm teeters on the brink of chaos, and all you can think about is commerce. Forgive us. We were not aware Dalmechia now subsisted on charity. Not quite. How dare you! Ah! 
Distinguished members of the council, you must forgive His Majesty this intrusion. What did you... What is the meaning of this? A trifle crowded, but I fear it will have to serve, my liege. Very well. My colleagues, do you not see? The king is come to save us from the Akashic. He is a gift from the heavens, divine intervention, our very salvation. And of course, if it is compensation he requires, we would be most willing to negotiate a fair price for services rendered. Fools. Your ignorance unbecomes you. Your Majesty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would swear that the fiends washing the cobbles of Canva with the blood of her citizens wear the colors of Walud. <laughs> ha! So you do not deny it. Guards, fetter them and see our guests to the dungeons! <laughs> Enough. The girl is still here, somewhere in the city. Her consciousness fair dripping with her late father's hubris. A consciousness to which Muthos is inextricably bound and inexorably drawn. See that he is made welcome. Yes, your majesty. Come, Muthos. Surely the Prince's light cannot have sated you. So then... How long has Walud been under Ultima's control? How long indeed? Based on what we know of Barnabas' actions, I would guess some few years, mayhap more. But to what end? What does Ultima want? The tapestry. Show them. Gate, Drake's breath, and now here. But what is it? It is old, ancient, even. Naught remains of the faith it represents, save what can be gleaned from the image itself. None could tell me what the one in the apodotry meant, even the undying. But I believe it may be the key to discerning Ultima's purpose. That figure in the center. The one beneath whom the icons congregate, that I believe to be Ultima. He is a god, or at least godlike. His very existence beyond our ken. The icons, and by extension their dominance, are meant to be his subjects. And while some, like Barnabas, have accepted this role, others have rejected it. Like you, Clive. Which is rather inconvenient, as it appears he needs you most of all. And gods don't like to be disobeyed. I don't suppose they do. Clive, may I tell Yote of the lake? By all means. 
Yote, I will be accompanying my brother to the free cities. <sighs> Whilst we are afield, I would have you watch over those Clive has made his wards. Omia lost Delan to his Sag Ilith. Though well concealed, the hideaway lacks trained fighters to defend its occupants should they be discovered. But it is my duty to... As it has ever been my brother's duty, remember. If... if that is your wish, your grace. But please be safe. If aught were to befall you, I... You have my word. Farewell, my lord, my lady. We are in your debt, Yote. Let's find our friends. It's plain she cares for you very deeply. And I her. Which is why I had to let her go. Careful how you pack that leather. Any crystals gone. You there! This strapping lad with the sword! Finally! No one was paying me the slightest heed. Is something wrong? At the university, the students would hang on my every word. Sadly, this far from home. I'm just a vagrant greybeard. The university? You're a scholar. A specialist in ancient cultures. The most accomplished in all Valisthea, some have said. Not that I look the part in these tattered rags. In my heyday, no obstacle could have kept me from my studies. Yet here I am, a wizened windbag, bested by the many steps of Tabor. The answers I seek lying just beyond my enfeebled reach. Would you do an old man a kindness and brave the stairs in my stead? You'll be amply rewarded, of course. Climb the stairs and... And memorize a few inscriptions for me. Uh, assuming you know your letters, that is. Uh, some courteous soul is rumored to have carved clues to Tabor's rich history into stones dotted about the village. Uh, three of them, to be precise. One each to the north, south, and east. I'm here in the hope that those carvings might shed light on a riddle I've been pondering for some time. Namely, the otherwise undocumented origins of Tabor's unique people. Uh, people quite unlike those of neighboring lands. I can't promise I'll remember everything perfectly. Remember what you can. I'll piece together the rest. Make for the domed pavilions, and you'll have no trouble finding the stones. Farmers must have settled here in Tabor. These inquiries been hard to find since the sky's turn. It has indeed. 
Can't blame the beasts for being on edge. What golden plains might the wanderers have called home, I wonder? Mm. And a scratch on them. So it's these stones to Canva, and the rest of the boxes. History would be complete without mention of the mother crystals. I should speak to the old scholar before I forget everything I've read. How are those new boots treating you? The engravings were in good repair considering their age. Oh, what that I could have seen them for myself. Oh, come, don't tease me now. What did you learn of this place and its people? Uh, let's start with the engraving to the south, shall we? Uh, what did it say? Guardians of the Crystal, the first stones of Tabor, sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. I'm pretty sure that was it. Fascinating. It would seem the founders of this city were descendants of those fallen charged with protecting the Mother Crystals. But oh, whatever could have driven the Guardians so far from their sacred charges, I wonder? The engraving to the north is next, I think. Wanderers of the Golden Plains. Lay your roots in stone. With pride recall thy noble past, and make these rocks a home. Or... I think that was it, at least. No doubt you're right. There are vestiges of nomadic customs in Tabor its guardian roots could never account for. This is proving most enlightening. Now, for the final stone. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessing and give praise her gracious hand. That's all three. And so, we add primitive farmers to Tabor's founding peoples, the final piece of the puzzle. Three engravings, one for each of the three peoples to have settled Tabor in ancient times. Guardians of the Mother Crystal, wanderers from across the plains, and last, but certainly not least, hunters turned farmers. Little wonder it was so difficult to trace the roots of Tabor's culture. Those roots reached down through three distinct traditions. Nonetheless, one cannot help but wonder why this fact is not better known among scholars given that the stones stand here for all to see. Too many stairs, perhaps. Ha! <laughs> Too many by far. Here, and thank you. Careful how you pack that leather. Any creases or scratches. Opportunity beckons. Who among you is bold enough? Is that blade for hire, perchance? Because I have a mind to make a killing. Figuratively, I hope. Well, yes and no. A passing caravan carried with it a rumor most fortuitous for one in my trade that an elder Dread Evis had been sighted in the fields of Carava. Dread Evis are aggressive beasts, 
Compelled as they are to acts of violence, few survive to maturity. But those that do develop a hide of phenomenal value. A hide you want to sell? Eventually, yes. Though I would have it tanned first that it might be crafted into marvels the likes of which the world has never seen. Dread Evis skin is a rare thing indeed. But the worked hide of a well-aged beast... Now, that would fetch such coin that Gilbot himself might weep with envy. Bring me that beast's skin, and I will share with you the bounty of our combined labors. All right. I'll hunt your Evis. Of course you will. When one lives in such troubled times, it is a fool who lets opportunity slip his grasp. Leave Tabor through the east gate, but take the path that branches west. Once you reach the checkpoint at Toveni, you are a mere stone's throw from the fields of Karava. I eagerly await your safe, and above all, triumphant return. Still plenty of fight in him yet. off my hands the better. Here's your hide. As requested. I worried you might never return. Quickly, let me see it. as a maiden's cheek, yet as adamant as her virtue. This is everything I had hoped for, and more. Clearly, my trust in you was not misplaced. You must be a hunter of considerable talent to have bested the beast with nary a scratch. Join me as my honored partner. With my means and your might, we shall be as wealthy as the merchant kings of Zemeckis. I don't plan on making a habit of this. I'm busy enough as it is. Very well. Though I believe fate had a hand in our meeting, it would be unbecoming of me to beg. Do not allow me to keep you from being about your business. Here, for the hide. Feel good, boy. 